Imposing gun control by executive order, Barack Obama goes it alone after failing to convince Congress to approve new restrictions. But can the president's plan prevent more mass shootings in the U.S.? And do weapon ownership laws in other countries work? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Rochelle Carey. Barack Obama says the U.S. gun lobby is holding Congress hostage. Any plans to fix that? The U.S. president is bypassing Congress and issuing a set of executive orders to try and reduce gun crime. His plan requires all gun dealers to be licensed and demands more background checks on anyone who wants to buy a weapon. Republican Party critics are accusing Obama of a gross misuse of power and supporters of the right to bear arms are also gunning for him. Our correspondent Tom Ackerman sets up the story for us from Washington, D.C. Dozens of American deaths each day from gunshots. Now the president has his attorney general readying his options for narrowing access to firearms. This is not going to solve uh, every violent crime in this country. Uh, it's not going to prevent every mass shooting. Uh, it's not going to keep every gun out of the hands of a criminal. Uh, it will potentially save lives in this country. Congress has refused to close loopholes in the law which allow unlicensed gun dealers to sell weapons without criminal background checks. So Obama says he will invoke his executive authority to tighten the regulations. A lot of the work that has gone on has been uh, to ensure that we would have uh, confidence in the legal basis uh, of these actions. The top Republican in Congress, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, says Obama's plans reach, quote, a dangerous level of executive overreach, and the country will not stand for it. All right, what you got? One of the Republican contenders to succeed Obama says he's acting like a petulant child after his legislative well, defeats. Mr. President, it's because they reject your ideas repeatedly, and now you're going to try to impose them anyway? The National Rifle Association, the powerful pressure group which opposes any new gun controls, says the Obama administration is violating the rights of honest gun owners while ignoring the roots of the violence. The untold secret in Washington is that he has all the laws he needs to stop the bloodshed now. Take violent criminals off the street. Prosecute them under the current federal gun laws and make sure they don't get to their next crime scene. That's the way to save lives. Meanwhile, federal authorities in the state of Oregon are weighing what actions to take against a group of armed protesters who've taken over a public building in a remote wildlife refuge. They've promised no violence, but refuse to recognize Washington's authority over the land. We have a strong tradition of gun ownership in this country. Obama will follow up his executive orders later this week with a national broadcast devoted to gun violence. In his last year as president, demonstrating his determination to curb an epidemic of gunfire expected to claim more American lives than traffic accidents. Tom Ackerman, Al Jazeera, Washington. Now, one of the key groups in America's gun control debate is the National Rifle Association, as Tom mentioned. It actively lobbies to prevent gun regulation laws and is considered to be one of the most powerful and influential groups in Washington. The NRA's power comes from its loyal base of around 5 million members. It sponsors shooting sports and safety programs across the U.S. and operates on an annual budget of a quarter of a billion dollars, which comes from membership fees and also corporate sponsors. For more on this, I am joined by our guests in Atlanta, Georgia. Jerry Henry, a gun lobbyist and executive director of GeorgiaCarry.org, an organization protecting the rights of Georgians to own and carry firearms. In Washington, D.C., John Rosenthal, founder and chairman of Stop Handgun Violence. John has been invited to the White House for the president's announcement on gun control. And in Brussels, Niels Duque, researcher at the Flemish Peace Institute. And welcome to all of you appreciate your time for this discussion so much. Um, John, I want to start with you. How would you characterize the level of gun violence in the United States? Well, I'm a gun owner and a business person. 
And uh, I am a firm believer in the Second Amendment, but I also believe that the founders never intended the Second Amendment to protect criminals, terrorists, and even uh, in the mentally ill to buy guns undetected. So as a result of the lack of regulation and no background checks for private gun sellers, including to the criminals, uh, we have 90 gun deaths a day. There have been 160 school shootings since Sandy Hook three years ago. And last year, every single day of the year, there was a mass shooting of four or more people. So we have a public health and a public safety crisis. And I applaud the president um, for acting in the absence of, of Congress uh, acting responsibly to save American lives from preventable gun violence. Jerry, how would you characterize the level of gun violence in the United States? Well, first off, I would, I would uh, disagree with his, uh, some of his numbers. There are about 90 people a day in the United States that are killed by firearms, but approximately 60 of those are killed by their own hands. Those are the suicide people. Uh, if you look at, at crime rates in, in uh, the United States, the crime rate is continually going down, even though uh, gun ownership is way up. So uh, as far as uh, gun violence, there is no, are not th down, no such though. thing as gun violence. Mass shootings are well, not it, it, they have Well, they have changed the definition of mass shootings to include uh, anyone, uh, anytime four or more people have been killed. Now, when you look at these, an awful lot of those, you look in Chicago, those are uh, drug, viola uh, drug and gang related. Same thing in, in Baltimore and other places. When what people are, what they're trying to get you to think is that when they say mass shootings, they want you to think of Sandy Hook, they want you to think of Columbine. That's not the case. These gun, these uh, mass shootings, so-called mass shootings, are neighborhood gang violence more than it is someone going in and doing an active shooter such as San Bernardino. Does that not disturb you? Well, anything disturbs me. However, it disturbs me more that I would have to live in a place such as Chicago where I uh, was not free to uh, defend myself and my family from some of these gang and thug dealers. Um, John, this executive action that the president has taken, is this an effective way, in your opinion, to curb gun violence? Well, it's a great start. I mean, literally, 50% of all gun sales in the United States for decades have been private gun dealers selling to individuals, whether they're ISIS members like you see online with the jihadi John saying, go to the U.S., uh, gun shows and buy assault weapons undetected, or criminals, you know, uh, buying guns undetected in the 33 states that don't require background checks. So the fact that he's in improving the background check system yes. is great. The, the fact that he's improving uh, access and, uh, and, and, incent and incentives for the gun industry to make smart gun technology is a great start. I mean, think about this. Congress doesn't care that 32,000 Americans die every day. And the fact that this that's guy in pretty, Georgia is saying that, you know, that's more... That's a pretty incendiary statement um, there, John, that Congress just doesn't care. Think, think about it. Think about it. For, for decades, 32,000 Americans have died every day, every year. That is more Americans dying from guns in this country than all U.S. servicemen and women killed in all foreign wars combined. And there's no background check for firearms. 33 states and thousands of gun shows sell guns without an ID or a background check. And unlike toy guns and teddy bears that are regulated and automobiles that are regulated, the inherently dangerous firearm is completely unregulated in this country. The manufacturers not only uh, can make any gun they want and market it any way they want, including capable of penetrating soft body armor, Congress gave immunity from lawsuits when they directly sell to criminals. So how else could you, uh, you know, characterize the fact that Congress is owned lock, stock and barrel by the gun industry? And thankfully, we have a president who wants to help save lives versus arm criminals. OK, uh, Jerry, I'm sure you want to get in on this. But for just a moment, we're going to broaden out this discussion to talk about 
um, the numbers uh, of guns that are owned by people in other countries and gun deaths to see what may be working in, in other countries. And then I'll bring all of you in. So let me get some of these numbers out here. Gun laws in other countries have proven to be successful, but in many states in the U.S., just filling out a form will actually get you a gun. So do loose gun laws lead to high rates in gun ownership and violence? Let me get you some numbers. In the U.S., there are 112 guns owned by 100 people. Compare that to neighboring Canada, only around two people per 100 own guns. The prevalence of guns in the United States is at least 10 times higher than in the UK, Germany and Australia. Not surprisingly, that coincides with a high number of gun murders in the US, around 13,000 last year alone. That's around 30 times the number of gun murders per person in the UK. And countries where gun violence is low, Credit often goes to stricter gun regulation, such as psychological evaluations, along with criminal and mental health record checks. In many countries, it is simply illegal to own a gun. Jerry, I know you don't want it to be illegal to own a gun. Obviously, I, I, I understand that, but what about the numbers that I just said to you s jumps out to you? Well, the numbers of guns owned in the United States if you look at those, uh, if, th if gun ownership was a problem, then this, day, this whole country would be red with blood. Uh, because of the numbers that you said, uh, there were something like uh, 300 and something million guns that weren't used in crimes yesterday in this country, or the day before, or the day before, or won't be in the day after. The problem That's is not the firearm. That's how you're choosing to look the at it? The problem is the person. Well, the problem is not the firearm. The problem is the person that is using the firearm. Okay. The, um, by, me, gun, fire, guns are not violent. Okay. People are violent. We've heard that. Uh, we've heard that uh, quite a bit in this discussion. Niels, I'd like to bring you in um, because you have this global perspective on it. When you hear those numbers, what is working in other countries that doesn't seem to be working here? From a European perspective, when we look at the American gun deaths rate, it's it's quite unbelievable. Um, what we have in Europe is well-regulated uh, possession of firearms. And if you compare the gun deaths, uh, the, the difference are spectacular. In the European Union, which is a higher population than the United States, we have about 1,000 gun homicides every year. In the U.S., this, this number goes up to 12 to 13,000 for a, a population which is smaller than the European Union. And many believe that the, the, the possession rules and the regulation that we have on firearms plays an important role here. Of course, uh, regulation of firearms is not the only factor that can play a role in, in explaining gun crime or criminality in general, but it's an important factor. And what we've seen in, in many countries in which uh, we've seen mass shootings here in Europe is that the regulation for possessing firearms has become more restrictive after such shootings. While when we look at the United States, we see the opposite. Uh, and that's quite amazing from a European perspective. Um, what so is the difference? I, I do what believe is the, that's... What is the difference in the mindset that, that it seems that other countries react differently after mass shootings than it seems to happen in the U.S.? What's different? Can you, are you able to drill down on that for me? Well, I think in the United States, uh, possession of guns is something very emotional. This is a very political issue, while in most European countries, this is not. We look at guns as dangerous products that need to be regulated. We don't have the same emotional attachment as to, gun, to guns, and we don't have the same connection to the Constitution, for example. Um, so the American history always is connected to guns. Uh, in Europe, this is much different. And this uh, means that we also have a gun lobby, which is not that strong in Europe compared to the United States. Um, of course, there are gun lobbies, and they try to oppose gun uh, legislation changes, but they're not that successful. Um, I can talk for my own country, for example, in Belgium, we always had a very strong gun lobby, and it opposed any regulation for many decades. Uh, in 2006, we had a mass shootings here in the streets of Antwerp, where a young guy shot and killed two people out of racist motives. And public opinion was so outraged that the, the, this legislation, which was ready to be implemented but never got past uh, the Congress, suddenly got speeded through Congress, but the result is there. Before 2006, when legislation was enacted, we had more than 300 gun deaths every year. Today, we talk about less than 200 gun deaths every year. So there seems to be a very clear impact of changing legislation, and people in Europe seem to understand that. When you say um, re regulation, what type 
of regulation are we talking about? Well, uh, in Europe, it's a stand back to background checks are standard practice. Uh, the basic idea in Europe is that uh, guns are dangerous goods and the, the possession of these goods should be limited to those people who are proven to be responsible gun owners, who can prove they know how to handle a gun, know the legislation, and importantly, have a very good cause why they own a gun. For example, hunting, sport shooting, uh, even collecting guns. But you need to be able to prove that. Um, if you cannot prove that, most of the guns that are out there are not for sale for you. Um, Jerry, does that sound reasonable or unreasonable to you? Well, that's what we have to go through here. If you want to uh, buy a firearm, you have to go through a background check. And I don't know, it, earlier no, it was stated I'm, I'm that 33 asking. states don't require that. I don't disagree with that. I disagree with that. Everybody, every state requires a background check in order for you to buy a firearm from a federal firearms license dealer. So where do you think um, President Obama and gun owners are so far apart on this? Well, because he, he uh, has stated in his, uh, his uh, political career has stated that he wants to do away with guns. He doesn't believe the Second Amendment uh, applies to the citizens of the United States. And he has fought sure that. that. He did change his mind after the Supreme... Well, yes, ma'am, because he changed his mind after the Supreme Court case, Heller versus D.C., was, uh, was adjudicated, and the Supreme Court said that it was a right of the people to keep and bear arms. Go, John, I know you want in on this. I can tell. Go, go right ahead. <laughs> the, the Heller case said you can't ban guns, but you can put reasonable restrictions on how they are sold, and Justice Scalia actually wrote for the majority that that did not include military-style assault weapons. So, you know, it's just not that complicated. I mean, think about automobiles, training, licensing, registration, and safety features. Firearms are more inherently dangerous, and in Massachusetts, we treat guns the same way, training, licensing, registration, and safety features. Massachusetts, one state in the United States, has reduced firearm fatality rates by over 60% since 1994, whereas Georgia, you know, makes guns available to virtually anybody without passing a background check if they go to a private gun dealer, and their firearm fatality rate is two and three times greater than urban industrial Massachusetts. So if the goal is to reduce injuries and deaths from guns, we have a model in an urban state like Massachusetts. But sadly, sadly, Congress has decided that criminals and terrorists and the mentally ill should be able to continue to buy guns undetected from private gun dealers. They actually voted recently to allow people on suspected terrorist watch lists. These are people that cannot fly in airplanes, but they should be able to continue buying guns from gun dealers, the only place in America where background checks are required. Um, let me ask you something. Part of the president's executive action, one of, one of the points on there was to put um, an emphasis on mental health awareness. Some critics would say that often when this discussion comes up, that the mentally ill are actually scapegoated, that the mentally ill are just as much at risk of being victims of gun violence as everybody else, and that it's often easier to discuss that than to discuss the real issue. Do you have a response to that? I like a response from, from, from all three of you, actually, on that. Let me go to you first, actually, Niels. Well, I, I think mental illness is a risk factor, and I think uh, possessing firearms should be limited to those who are mentally sane and are capable of using a gun in a responsible way. But it's true that they do run a, a higher risk of being a victim. But it doesn't mean that you could, should, should just give them weapons. Uh, but we're not just talking about criminal history, we're not just talking about mental illness, but even uh, alcohol problems, for example. We know that many gun homicides don't take place in a criminal sphere but take place at home. Domestic disputes running out of hand because of, uh, for example, overconsumption of alcohol. So people who have an alcohol problem have much difficulties getting guns in Belgium. Um, so we shouldn't just limit it to the criminal history. We shouldn't just limit it to mental illness. But there's so many factors that play a role. Um, John, would you like to add, add to what Niels is talking about? Oh, absolutely. Look, um, the United States doesn't have a, a lock on mental illness. Uh, every country has mental illness. We just happen to arm the mentally ill without detection in this country. I totally agree with you that it's a small percentage 
of, uh, of folks that have mental illness that are doing uh, this carnage with firearms. But how do you even know if somebody's a criminal, a terrorist, or mentally ill if you don't have a universal background check? And it's beyond me how Congress and the gun lobby can be opposed to a background check for all gun sales when it could prevent criminals, the mentally ill, and terrorists from accessing guns without any inconvenience on law-abiding gun owners like me. Jerry, do you think that, I don't know if you ever get asked this question, do you think that the NRA is sometimes mischaracterized? Well, I think they are because they're, they're actually more gun-friendly than most of the grassroots organizations in the states. Uh, I would point out, though, that uh, when he brought up the uh, no-fly list or the suspected terrorist list, Ted Kennedy couldn't have bought a firearm. Ted Kennedy was a senator who helped pass that bill. Those, anytime you put somebody on any kind of list without due process, and that includes the mentally ill as well, then you have uh, just uh, gotten rid of part of the Constitution of the United States. Nobody is for arming people who are mentally ill who have been adjudicated as such. So, and, and I don't, I mean, our, our state is forced, in fact, we passed a law uh, in 2014 that forced the state to notify NICS system within 10 days maximum of someone being involuntarily hospitalized for mental illness. Um, John, this executive order, do you think that it actually has legs? Because obviously, as you know, um, depending on what happens in the next election, this could complete, be, could be completely upended. So how, mon how much teeth does this really have? Well, I think it will help uh, prevent criminals and terrorists uh, and people that shouldn't be able to buy guns without detection um, from, from accessing them. And with 90 gun deaths a day and a mass shooting every single day of last year, uh, you know, anything is better than nothing. And uh, in the absence of Congress caring, uh, you know, enough about protecting the American people from gun violence and caring more about campaign contributions from the unregulated gun industry. It's all the president can do, but I, I'm hoping he will do more this week and this year, including banning assault weapons and high capacity ammunition magazines like Congress used to ban that are the common denominator in all the mass shootings. Jerry, your thoughts? Well, number one, there is no such thing as an assault weapon. Uh, there are assault rifles, which are fully automatic. There are semi-automatic rifles, which is what they try to call an assault weapon. The other thing that, that I would like to say is that, that um, I've, I've lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. Um, but at any rate, uh, I, the, there's, there's still, the 90 people a day, still two-thirds of those people approximately are um, uh, suicide. And that does not, the firearm does not have any effect on the suicide rates. As far as background checks, we have background checks. Uh, the most of what I have seen that he says, it, it's already law. So uh, I don't see how he's going to do anything with this particular executive order, order other than increase the gun sales in the United States. Niels, I'm going to give the last word to you. Do you see these, the, the rate of gun violence in the U.S. Um, ever? ever going down? That's a good question. Um, what we see every time with every study is that countries with more guns tend to have more gun deaths. This is, this is proven time and time again. Uh, the fear is that in the U.S. you have so many guns for so many people and most of these guns are not even well registered that even if you try to deal with the problem you will still have this vast amount of illegally held firearms which will disappear and which will also have the potential of causing much much damage um, so let's hope it's not too late but i would encourage uh, the united states to adapt to more european style regulation because here we see that it works gentlemen thank you all very much for the discussion. Uh, Jerry Henry, John Rosenthal, Neil Stuquet, wonderful discussion on a very important topic. And thank you all for watching. As always, you can leave your comments on the program's page. Our website is uh, aljazeera.com. You can also post your views on facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story or tweet us at AJ Inside Story. From me, I'm Rochelle Carey and all of our team here. Bye for now.